Hello, it's Damon here and uh, the sun is shining. I'm here in uh, Wimberley, Texas, uh, the Blue Hole. I do want to let you know that there is a giant cow off to the side. And if he walks behind me, then uh, just ignore it because you're going to see this big brown floating walking object. Just ignore that. Uh, but today's topic is still really, really important. Today's topic is about levels of maturity. So I want you guys to be aware that having a strong level of maturity in each of these categories is really going to help your overall development. So the first level of maturity I want to discuss is physical maturity. Physical maturity is the, the body. It's the body. What is the body doing? How is it performing? How are you feeling? Is your cardiovascular system up to par? Are you eating? Are you take care of your, taking care of yourself? Are you eating a good diet? Okay, are you giving your body the proper nutrition to cultivate yourself, to cultivate physical maturity? Now, uh, we naturally physically mature as we get older um, from, see that cow? That's crazy. That, uh, that physical maturity we actually enhance when we get older and, and it gets, you know, get, you get stronger and you get more effective. But here's the issue. Um, there, there, we have this kind of by default physical maturity. Then you have a physical maturity which is a whole nother level. And that physical maturity is taking care of your body, taking the steps and the strides necessary to, to take care of your, your shell. It's not who you are, but it's what hosts you. And if you can look at it in that weird alien-like way and realize that my body is not necessarily me, but it's what hosts me and allows me to interact with this reality, which I don't want to get in that super spiritual discussion, but if we can recognize that we're doing that and we're operating here, you want to take care of your host in a way. You want to take care of your, your, uh, your conduit to reality and uh, taking care of the people that you have in your life. So you want to enhance your physical uh, appearance. And I'm not saying get, you know, spend two hours in the gym, drink protein drinks, get jacked. You know, I'm not saying go that extreme. You can if you really want to. But this is more about health than it is about appearance, okay? It's about taking care of your health, making sure your body has optimum performance ability, okay? And I say optimum for whatever you need to do. And if that's just, you know, having enough energy in your day, we're gonna talk about energy in a minute, but, you know, just naturally, physical energy, having enough of that, sometimes exercise really helps that. Uh, I don't wanna get off topic, but I do wanna say that energy is primarily uh, generated by decision. It's not generated because of your lack of sleep or your too much sleep. It's a choice you make, right? I sleep about four to five hours per night, uh, sometimes more, sometimes less, sometimes way less, two hours sometimes. So I average probably around three to four hours per night. And everybody's gonna say, hey, you know what? That's probably really unhealthy. It is sort of, but uh, how do I maintain my levels of energy? How do I have so much excitement? How do I want to do things? Now, naturally, if you put me still and you put on like Bob Ross, um, I might fall asleep, right? But ultimately, uh, my energy level is a choice, which means that I can fuel myself to get started for the day. I can wake up tired and I can go, you know what? Stop, stop, just stop it. Focus, get yourself in the game and get it done. Now there's a point where it does physically take over. And I do want to let you know that, you know, the mind can't, the mind has a lot of power, but it's not, the body does play a role. So keep that in mind too. So that's physical maturity in a nutshell. We can talk a lot more about that. There's a lot of stuff I'm going to plan on releasing in the future, including nutrition some stuff to help you kind of optimize your physical condition because MBTV is really about getting you guys to the next level, getting you guys from a starting point, whatever it may be, and getting that MBTI type and saying, okay, I start off at this point. What do I need to do to become better in these categories? Okay, there's a lot to it. There's so much to it and I want to give you as much information as possible. Number two, mental maturity. What is mental maturity? Mental maturity is using is having knowledge, okay? It's it's having knowledge and uh, generating whatever knowledge you may need to survive in the world. That's you know maybe knowledge of how to work a job or how the job works or technical knowledge or you know maybe you need to memorize dates or maybe you need to uh, do something that you know in, encourages you to read more. That's that's mental maturity. Develop your mind. You know if you're if you're not reading, you're not you're not really focusing on on developing your mental maturity. You may have a lot of intelligence, but mental maturity comes from taking in information that may not be generated from you. You're looking at things in a bigger picture. You're, looking, you're stepping outside of this bubble that you've created that you may think has all the answers, but in reality, if you combine all the experience of everybody who's written a book, you got 
they kind of outweigh you in your 20 to 50 years of living or 60 years of living or however old you are watching this video. You'll find that some of the most successful people, and I don't mean financially successful, successful in their life from relationships to um, you know, their careers to their, you know, the way they take care of their health, all those things. Some of the most successful people read. I'm telling you, it's really, really critical to read. And that's one of the reasons why I want to start writing some articles. But more importantly, I want to make sure that you guys are getting plenty of information about the importance of reading and or watching YouTube videos or whatever. Just get information in. And it's not just the, the act of reading. The good, the, the thing that's different from reading into uh, watching YouTube videos is reading allows your mind to take a sentence and it kind of allows you to reflect on the sentence. Whereas a YouTube video may, it doesn't go at your pace. It goes at a, you're getting information in a certain pace. Like if you're watching my video, you're getting a lot of information up front. You're getting a whole bunch of information. You may have to watch it six or seven or eight times. With reading, you can take a particular sentence that jives with you and stop and reflect on it. It gives you more time to process. It gives you more time to analyze. Reading is not a race. It's a way for you to develop that mental maturity. Um, there's the next level of maturity, which I'm going to call your emotional maturity. This is emotional intelligence. Uh, this is your ability to be able to control, self-manage your emotions, be aware of your emotions, or be, uh, have the uh, awareness, the management of those emotions, to be able to manage the emotions of others, right? To be able to uh, handle other people's emotion and not allow, allow it to affect you in a way that's a negative effect, okay? So uh, allowing it to give you the, uh, the control of your own emotions, whatever that may be. And I'm not saying suppress them or repress them. I'm saying, you know, having the, the awareness that what's going on in my state right now. And also, a little bit in the crossover with spiritual maturity, we'll get into that in a second, is emotional maturity gives you the ability to start seeing that. In the bigger picture, what kind of, uh, am I aware of the, the awareness of your emotions? Okay, so emotional intelligence is a big part of that. MBTI really dives into a lot of emotional intelligence, how to interact with other types, what functions relate to certain aspects of emotional intelligence. Okay, so there's that. The fourth area of maturity is going to be your spiritual level or your spiritual category. And spiritual maturity is essentially your connectedness with things. And I don't mean objects of things, I mean everything. Your connectedness with other people, your connectedness with the world around you, realizing that you're a part of everything around you. Uh, you know, this is not a religious thing. It's a connectedness. Being aware that your body isn't you. Being aware that you are more than your behavior. Being aware that you have an essence and a power inside of you and the control of that. Spiritual uh, maturity to me is the one that governs the, everything else. If you don't make a decision today, it says, I want to not be constrained by what society imposes on me or what my family imposes on me or what you know I even impose on me. And I want to become more than just what I see here. That's where uh, spiritual maturity comes into play. It allows you to separate. It allows you to release attachments to the tangible world. It allows you to see the bigger picture, right? It allows you to see and associate or dissociate from certain things in reality. So... Spiritual maturity is the, the it's a lot about contribution, bigger than oneself. It's about it's about humbling yourself, and it's not saying that you're humble. It's about taking yourself down a notch, and realizing that you're not the center of the universe. You are not the center of the world. You're not the center of your family. You're not the center of your own life. It feels like it, but we all share this life in one way or another. And recognizing the the role that we play, and I don't mean the role that society gives us, but the role that we play in our human bodies, as I discussed in the physical section, that is uh, pertinent to developing spiritual maturity. This is enhanced through spiritual practices, um, whether it's the practice of a certain tradition that enhances your awareness of self, whether it's meditation, whether it's all kinds of different things. It could be uh, float tanking, it could be, you know, uh, ayahuasca or whatever they call it, ayahuasca. It could be a number of different ways to take you to a different level. Um, I'm not big on the drug side, but some people really say it's beneficial, like the, the DMT or whatever, I don't know. But the uh, point is, there's a lot of ways to enhance that and look at that perspective. There's a lot of people who are really spiritually developed, but they don't have the other maturities, right? And that's where a lot of times they just, they have a hard time managing relationships because they don't have those other maturities. People can't handle them very well, or they seem weird or kooky or whatever. And that person's not weird, it's just they don't, they don't have the other maturities to be able to interact with reality and switch gears. And that's emotional maturity too, when to switch gears. 
when to look at something and go, you know what, it, I, need to, I need to behave this way, I need to stretch this way, or I need to do this. And this is where a lot of cognitive function theory comes into play too. All right, so the last level, all right, so the last level of maturity is your sexual maturity. This is your ability to be able to have awareness in a relationship situation to where you are not dominated by your human instinctive impulse of sexuality. And that means that someone's not using that to take advantage of you. You're able, and you're not using it to, you're not losing control of it. It's not like you, um, you're so unfamiliar with it that the minute somebody uses it and it exposes you to something like that, you can kind of just fall apart or become like a, a child. And this happens in a lot of relationships. And uh, this is a whole topic in itself. This is uh, often developed by even just studying sex sexuality. You don't necessarily need to participate in it. Now, um, you have to be able to see it in your head, though, because if not, then you're not going to have a proper stimulus setup. That's a whole other situation I don't really want to dive into right now. But point is, this is a really important aspect that affects relationships, and if you don't have a lot of sexual maturity, you're going to be doing making a lot of sacrifices that you shouldn't have to be making, and you're going to be... Uh, losing a lot of opportunities in your relationship to enhance it to the next level. And this comes from finding your inner masculinity or femininity, it doesn't matter if you're male or woman, I'm sorry, male or female, but finding your inner masculinity and finding your inner femininity and creating balance between those two energies that are in everyone. We all have those two energies, but finding the, prop, uh, the appropriate balance for those two energies, right? You know, so uh, for me, example, I have more masculine energy than feminine energy, and it's probably out of balance quite a bit. Um, considering that I don't like expressing my emotions and that type of thing. This is also very associated with Myers-Briggs types. You're going to see thinking and feeling all have their relationship, their correlated relationship with these energies. So we're going to talk further about that uh, in just a little while. So anyway, thank you guys for participating, and uh, I'm going to release some more stuff on this.